Everybody. Welcome to a great start for Adobe Live here on a Monday. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to you. It's so good to have you with us. How are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you. I had a couple of coffees, uh, did some warm up drawings earlier, but yeah, I'm all right. Thank you. Oh, good. It's good to have you with us. And you are in great company. We have so many people that have already joined us in the chat today. Our community is great fun um i want to say quick hello you know to, i can see andreas angus sean Stu. uh tim is in the chat as well he's currently uh traveling through germany and uh so there's lots going on today and i really hope that if any of you are having one of those mondays where you've got you know there's rain clouds above your head and it's the start of the week then this will definitely brighten up your week and i've had a really tough job in the green room to try and stop asking geo questions and actually just wait until we go live because i'm like geo we've got to talk about this we've got to talk about this so i can't wait for, for geo to share everything today and um do how how's it been for you you know it's the weekend it's monday how's your monday so far yeah so yeah the monday's been pretty chill i think i kind of felt the same you know, like what you said earlier, like Monday, you kind of feel a bit drab, but I was excited to do this because I get to just draw and talk. It's always nice to meet other people and talk about your process and such. Definitely. And I can't wait for you to share your work and, and everything that you're doing. I know we should put in the chat today. Um, you can find Geo's work on uh, Geo Law on Instagram. Um, I've gone straight in there to see some of these uh, amazing pieces of art. Um, Geo, please tell everybody a bit about you and, um, you know, tell us your story. Great. Well, I could, yeah, just briefly, uh, I'm a freelance illustrator based in London, but I'm from Sheffield. I've been a freelancer for over a decade now. Um, I studied graphic design when I was younger, but I didn't kind of fall in with graphic design. I, I was always doodling, making characters, printing T-shirts, trying to kind of become an artist. And so over the years, lots of trial and error, I just kind of, you know, naturally just kind of fell into the world of illustration. Drawing pictures for a living is kind of what I tell my family members, like my aunties and uncles. I just draw pictures for a living. That's that's it. And it's good. <laughs> that's how they understand it. <laughs> well, you're good at what you do. And tell us, like, what kind of uh, things, that, you know, where would we see your your work? Where, you know, where, where are you, what kind of gigs are you getting at the moment? Well, I've had a lot of commercial clients. So I've done things for Google. I've, I've got a couple of murals. I've done a couple of, like, office murals for Facebook and then London HQ. I've actually got, if you ever get to visit the Walt Disney Animation Studio in Burbank, I've done a 30-metre mural in their basement, which is where they they um, where they where animate a lot of, like, their kind of current uh, movies. So, yeah, that's probably the, the biggest one I've done. Wow. Uh, occasionally, I've done editorial for, like, Time Out Magazine London. I've done editorials for, like, New York Times. And then occasionally I just make my own, I make my own works that I share on Instagram and share on Behance and my website as well. Love it. And, um, you know, before we jump in to show everyone a bit of your work, um, how do you stay inspired? You know, where do you get your, your ideas from? I find this really important. So I, I try and advise people to be inspired by something. It kind of, sometimes you don't have to look for it. Sometimes there are things that you might have written down or doodled in an old notebook um or you know if you before you could go traveling you go to museums and just like walk down the streets you can see like street art even advertising or, or or an outfit that someone wears but i always fall back to cartoons cartoons animation video games comic books anything like that i always find new ideas or new approaches uh, but obviously we've had like the, the past year and a bit of pandemic so being inspired and being kind of motivated was quite hard for a lot of people, but I just kind of, you know, put the iPad down, put the notebooks down, watch loads of cartoons and took a step out. Even just going for a walk 
that yeah. helps. It just I, I think sometimes inspiration comes like unexpectedly. Yeah. And that's when you have that desire and drive to kind of work on these things and eke it out, you know. Yeah, perfect. I mean, you're right. You just, you know, keep at it and uh, take a break. Don't take a walk because it's great. It can come from anywhere. Um, mm-hmm. Completely agree. Let's jump in and show people a little bit about what you do and some of your work. Um, you're right. all going to be so impressed, so colourful, so many things that I, you know, uh, that I've seen so far. <laughs> great. OK, so I've just created a very quick little keynote just to kind of show you some of the work that I've done. So I mentioned murals. Um, luckily, I've been flown to places like New York to doodle murals like this in Manhattan. Um, what I tend to do is so I work digitally and I work with pens, paper, and whatever. A lot of my commercial work is digital, but when I create murals, I just kind of go at it with a paint marker, like a Posca marker. I don't use pencil, sorry. I don't pencil the lines in first. I just kind of freestyle all over the wall. From years and years and hours and hours of practice, I can just kind of naturally draw these things. And it's like, amazing. if I'm being, <laughs> thanks. If I'm being overly critical, like everything that I draw isn't very neat. It's, it's quite wonky and janky. You know, they're my versions of like characters. Like you can see here, all these vid- video game characters. They are things that I've kind of, taken a lot of influence from so I draw them in my own way and um, the, a lot of these murals recently I've been applying a lot more color to them I normally work very fast so I try to keep colors down to a minimum but if clients really su- if they suggest like oh we want a lot of color then you know obviously I say okay budget wise if you can cover that that's great <laughs> and I'll just kind of you know try out lots of different colors but admittedly in the past these murals I've had friends help me like do the coloring in I hate coloring in um, it's, it's always easier when you're doing it digitally. Yeah. Uh, a lot, this is another digital drawing that I've done. And as you can see, a lot of my work is character based. So you have a lot of different, you have a lot of characters that overlap and a lot of characters that look the same, but I draw influences from, from all sorts of places. Like you can see some characters that are influenced from Far Eastern folk, um, folk culture. There's some Studio Ghibli in there. There's some 8 bit Super Mario style. Um, Kind of characters so you can see where a lot of my influences come from like i mentioned anime i love you know classic animes like akira this is probably the most parodied image so i kind of wanted to give it my own twist you know the, the famous akira poster very cool. i like to kind of draw very positive things as well like if i just to kind of share on social media i try and use my social media as a platform just to kind of remind people you might be having a bad day this this and that but i hope you know, I hope maybe my images or my doodles might cheer someone up or make someone feel like, yeah, cool. Like, you know, just remind them that with bad days, good days are always around the corner. That's nice. And yeah, and then this is some of my commercial work. So I do create gifts as well. Uh, admittedly, I've worked with an animator on this, but we kind of work together on the frame, on the keyframes and such. I do a lot of these, actually. I, I tell a lot of people, I make my gifts on uh, Adobe Photoshop and... And, you know, some of them are like, oh, wow, that's impressive. And some of them are quite horrified. Like, you can do these on, <laughs> on After Effects, but I just have this crazy way of working where I'll take the long, the longest route to get there. Do you know what, though? That's yeah. one thing that we love <laughs> on Adobe Live. We all find, uh, we've, we've all found our own way to do things. We, we, you know, there's been a lot of us that have been through education to learn, you know, graphic design. But then when you're working on a particular project, your long way might be the best way for you. And that's fine, too, right? So. That's um, right. We're just picking up, you know, everyone's techniques. So Photoshop, mm. I've, I've done an animation Photoshop in, from Fresco with a previous stream, and it works. I carry on, mm. and it looks good. It looks good. So, you, know. <laughs> you just play. I think that's, uh, yeah, like I've used a lot of those programs in the past. And I think, I think I learned how to animate a GIF in Photoshop when I was, like, ill. I was, like, I had a cold, like, a few years ago. I sat in bed with my laptop, went online just to see, like, how do you animate in Photoshop? And it was very easy, but then when I... I've taught I've taught classes at university uh, at Sheffield Hallam as a as a um, visiting lecturer, and I've taught them the long way. <laughs> so it kind of it's quite frustrating for a lot of students. But I, I think I try and encourage people to just play. Like that's the only way you learn. If a you give a child like a two year old an iPad, and they can work out how to use it. Playing is naturally within us all the time. And I try and do that with a lot of my work. I try and play with subject matter. I try and play with lighting techniques i'm not a master of anything 
but I just like trying different things. You might have noticed a lot of the work that we've just kind of scanned through, like it all has a different approach. Um, people say I have a style, but I like to say I have, I have, I guess I have a style, but I have many different approaches. And I try and apply the style to all those approaches. Like characters like these um, are influenced from my travels when we could just freely travel around. You know, I went to Southeast Asia to see some family in the in Hong Kong and Malaysia, and it's really it's really good in the Far East. You have some you have so many like character design on packaging and on billboards and such, so it gives you lots of ideas. Admittedly, these are these are mostly just sketches that I do on my uh, iPad, but I still keep a a um you know i still keep loads of notebooks i don't know if you can see this like i have loads of notebooks of just like oh, yeah. you know drawings i'll always kind of fill them with yeah. lots of just pen doodles fan. yeah 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 that's it i try and i try and practice just drawing with pens so if i make a mistake i try and turn it into something else or i keep the mistake there every time i flick back to it you know it, it just shows that you've kind of grown like you it's yeah. really good to keep notebooks from like years ago like if, if you look at a notebook that you had from five years ago and you flick through it, the ideas might be really strong, but then, you know, technically you realize oh, I've gotten better because I've just I've kept at it. I think drawing and art and writing and things like that, you only get better with age. You don't get worse. If I was a, an elite athlete, I would, I would, my skills would degrade over time because it's a physical thing. But I kind of feel like with drawing, writing, thinking, you only, you only get better at it. Well, that's how I feel anyway. I completely agree with you. And you can see your style comes through, you know, you've shown lots of different images, but you've got a, a style, you've got your niche, right, of, of what you do. And um, how does how does a project like this begin? Like when you're working with somebody, um, do you kind of sketch, uh, you know, like a, um, a small kind of draft of what you're thinking, what you're going to propose? Or do they more look, you know, at your other work and say, something like that and they completely put all of their trust in you to, to build it like how what's your process working with people it usually depends on the art director but a lot of the time the art director will see see my work and there's something that they like in it and they just kind of like the, like the nice jobs are the ones where they say just do your thing but I also like I also like it when art directors see my work and then they can they can potentially see oh you can do this stuff can we try and get you to to do it like this but in your style I can't think of any examples off the top of my head but a lot of the time uh, I ask a lot of questions uh, in the initial meeting and then I create a sketch I create one or two sketches I try not to create too many um, I try and give them like the crux of my idea and the crux of the approach and I'll always create a presentation so I just I don't just send them a jpeg of the sketch I'll give them a presentation of these are the things you stated that you like and then I'll show previous examples of my work on how I would uh, apply color, characters and such. And then I show them the sketch with some annotations. And, um, and then we just kind of go from there. I try and keep like sketch, sketch rounds low because the more you kind of work, work on something, because at the end of the day, the sketch is something that I will build upon in the final composition within the final artwork. And um, so it might look and feel different. I like projects that kind of evolve over time. You know, you come up with like a nugget of an idea and then more things, you kind of like yield more from that idea. Um, but again, a lot of the time, the art directors give me a lot of freedom to approach things the way I like. And that's, how, that's kind of how I work anyway. I work with a lot of freedom. Good. The way I draw yeah. is very unconstrained. I don't think I would have made a good graphic designer because I'm not neat. I don't use grids. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I just can't think like or work like that. I'm mm -hmm. some like as a kid, as a as a toddler, I used to scribble on the back of my parents' leather sofas, which they didn't find out until they threw out the sofas. Oh no way! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty bad. Yeah. Wow. Oh wow. No. Yeah. And um, do you know I've got a question for you? Um, how do you find that you are um like hired for work? Is it more um, Instagram that you know or is it mm. I mean how, how is it that you're because you know, your work you've, you've worked on some amazing projects as you said at the, you know at the start yeah well it's a mix of many different things so I, I am rep, I'm represented by agents so I have a UK and US agent but before I was signed by an agency a lot of my work was spreading on things like on social media platforms I would always post pictures of work that I've done 
So I would work on like like Facebook, LinkedIn's really good. Instagram, yes. Like art directors look at your Instagram, but I found Behance as well. I've actually been getting like inquiries and commissions through Behance. But a lot of the time, yeah, my agents. But before then, I was always updating my website. In the early days of social media, I just used social media. I remember posting work on MySpace (laughs) and a lot of people that went, yeah, yeah. Wow, I haven't heard that in a long time. Yeah, I'm older than I look. (laughs) I'm I'm way (laughs) older than I look. So I just embraced all of these new platforms, much like I embrace a lot of new things. Um, I remember I was a bit skeptical about getting iPads. I was skeptical about drawing on an iPad. That's not the same as drawing on paper. And now... 90% 90% of my work is all iPad, you know, drawing on a screen. Yeah. Well, we were so, saying um, in the green room just before we got started, but I was trying so hard not to speak because I, <laughs> we're, getting into, <laughs> we're getting into this conversation. But what we were saying in the green room was that um, that it's, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because it's great that we're able to pick up these iPads and, and draw and, and do, you know, just get, you know, get all of those ideas out and then get, you know, jump in. Then the bad thing is you don't put it down. So you could be drawing in bed, you could be drawing anywhere just, and you're working constantly. Right? <laughs> That's true. I don't know if you've done it recently, like when, you know, I'll be waiting at a train station and I'll just pick up my uh, sketchbook from my bag and start drawing. But you'll, if you're at a table with sketchbook, you, I don't know, you tend to find that you do the gestures, like, Oh, I made a wrong line and I want to double tap to, to undo like on my on my sketchbook. I, so that's I've done that so... pinch to zoom. I've pinched to zoom yeah. on a real photo. <laughs> yeah, it's strange. <laughs> it's wrong, isn't it? It's so yeah, wrong. It's strange. But it allows you to work remotely from anywhere. So like I've I know you, I would never tell I wouldn't advocate this, but like I, I think people should take a break and take a holiday. But sometimes when I've gone on holiday. I will take my iPad with me and, and a laptop just in case if I want to watch movies and you know the in the where I'm staying. And so I might just like, oh, can we just get those changes? We just need to do a change, and I could just do it very easily with my you know with the the equipment that I have there and then. But yeah. it just kind of it does show that you are available all the time and you can work all the time. But you have to remind yourself that you don't have to work all the time. You don't have to create yeah. artworks all the time. Yeah, you should, you should make artworks when you feel like internally, you know, inclined to do so. Like, mm. like you want to just kind of create something. Yeah. I tend to find when I'm working on lots of commercial work, that's when I, that's when I feel like I want to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, just yeah. like work on on my own thing, mm-hmm. and a lot of my own thing, it has no real purpose. I just kind of just draw these things to kind of what's the word like. Do you know when you like a, like a footballer will um, train every day on the training pitch? Yeah, I find that I find that my sketchbook is the training pitch. It's the laboratory. It's the workshop. That's good. I can do all I like these that. things. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that look on it. Uh, definitely. I mean, I completely agree that practice makes perfect. Right? You can keep on going and going. And um, you have a question from Nourish in the chat. He says, hey, do you think that quantity and consistency are more important or quality for growing your audience? I think quality, definitely quality, because like the quality will kind of impact you over time more, I feel. And but then quality is like something that is improved upon, like the more you do it. Every yeah. time you kind of hit upon something new and hit upon something exciting, that's not the end point. Like you'll only grow from that. Um, yeah. I always see these things as markers in time. That's kind of how I feel. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it's good. Kirsty, um, you know, agrees. She says, I, I unfortunately, I'm guilty for working a long time and not taking a break. But this year, you've been taking breaks. Good, Kirsty. It is so important, isn't it? Just to, you know, take a break mm-hmm. and give yourself other projects which could inspire, you know, your project in other ways. Um, so I did something random about a few weeks back. I was watching old, um, you know, catchphrase. You know, catchphrase <laughs> I remember, oh, yeah, yeah. And so they were having like Mr. Yeah. Chips and they were doing, you know, these things. And I thought, right, I could draw some of these, you know, like um, the different situations. And then, you know, new characters can be born on that new ways to draw things because you're thinking wow. about things really different. So that was one challenge I set myself. But, um, you know, it's... It, good to just get you know random inspiration take a break from what you're doing pick something else up and go back to it for sure yeah definitely yeah Yeah, definitely um I kind of I kind of feel like 
it's really important for people to remind themselves that if they can afford to, like, you know, you should take a break. But sometimes life gets in the way, doesn't it? And and it does. you, you have to deal with like immediate things. My poor agents, like I, every <laughs> summer, I summer I find it's really quiet for me work-wise. And I, yeah. it's because I've been working so much. I probably sometimes I'm not, I don't have the creative thing built up in me. I just kind of want to just work or do something. And I, you know, I'm always at my agents like, oh, is this the end? Like, oh, is my career over? Oh, no, all no. these new illustrators are coming through. But these are just horrible things you tell yourself because you, yeah. you work alone, don't you? A lot of artists yeah. work alone. Yeah. So it's hard when, if you're like a, an illustrator that works in the commercial realm, you're a one person finance manager, you, you're an account manager because you're handling the, the, the clients. You're the art worker, you're the crit group, you're everyone, all yeah. of these things. Um, so I, I'm normally based in London. So I have a like an open studio space that I share with loads of other different creatives. And I find that helps me just to kind of be in a room with other people and know I'm not the only one who's running a business, you know, on their own. You can kind of vent to other people. But if you I imagine if you worked in an office and such and your boss is being really difficult you can kind of just you know have a word with one of your colleagues and just vent <laughs> <laughs> yes yes well we um we have a good community here on adobe live and we have a discord uh, group that kind of the chat continues after the stream and so we can always let off steam there as well you know through <laughs> our creative journeys but um, tell me more about um this sketch that you have on your ipad and this uh, black and white creation that this is like I mean, how long does it take you to do this? Is this the start of something that will become really colourful? Is that what's this? It will be, yeah. I tend to with sketches like this, I'll tend to kind of just create uh, a doodle like this whilst I'm watching TV or listening to a podcast. Uh, when I go into the studio in the morning, I normally get paper or I get my uh, notebook and I'll start drawing just to kind of warm up. I'll draw nothing in particular. I just kind of draw these characters when they come to mind. Um, so yeah, this, so I, what I'll be doing today is I'll just be kind of answering questions, talking and just drawing in Adobe Fresco uh, using my Apple Pencil. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of clear this one off the screen. I'll just do that and then start a new drawing. So yeah, so today I'll just kind of draw what I normally do. And I like to just kind of create little borders in the corner and just kind of doodle these little flourishes that kind of mean nothing. I hope like the whole, I hope like the rotating of the uh, canvas doesn't make people sick. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, do you but, know what though? I find that as you turn it though, my, I begin to do this as you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think someone else told me like, oh, be careful if you're, you'll be rotating the camera all the time, like the canvas all the time. Um, oh. So yeah, I, I like kind of just, drawing and, and chatting and not really thinking about what I'm drawing, but I'll try and talk a little bit about the process. So when I do little compositions like this, especially in my mural work, I just like to build up foreground and background layers. I'll use characters and I'll use objects and props. And I create like little fantasy world as well, like create this like giant skull here, which I think I'll have a character sitting on. I might have a character standing on actually. And as you're adding characters, because all of your, um, there's some of the work that you've already shared with us, all of your characters kind of overlapping slightly or they're together. Do you add new layers every time you add a new character, just in case you want to change it, or is it all on that one layer? Ooh, it's always all on one layer, actually, which, which kind of frustrates me sometimes because it's like a flat artwork when I finish with it. Um, but if I'm working on, but if it was for a commercial purpose and they're talking about turning a lot of the artwork into different assets, then I will create different layers for new characters. So what I might do is I might create a layer for just the right side and then the left side and then the middle for this one. Um, but yeah, a lot of the time um, with things like this, I just kind of, I like to just doodle and then just see what happens in the end. If I need to kind of separate everything, then I'll just redraw it again and then find that it's a lot better. Oh, definitely. Once I've it. And do you have uh, go-to brushes that you're using? You, you mentioned, you know, vector brushes are your preference because you can take it straight into Illustrator. Um, yeah, currently, yeah, I'm using this vector brush here. Um, and then I've kind of played around with some of the smoothing on it as well. So like the smoothing will kind of allow for 
like how I don't know what the term would be like a, like it was snapped to a curve a little bit better. So if I just kind of play around with this, you can see how much more smoother that that line is. Like I sometimes I like to call them the cheating brushes because <laughs> you can't achieve that like in real life. But I think sometimes just for the speed and convenience, especially when you're working on commercial projects, you've either honed the technical ability to draw like perfect circles or you just kind of use shortcuts mm. uh, to do so. I, I don't think I've ever been that much of a purist, like, ooh, you draw digitally and you can't draw a circle properly. And it's like, well, I do whatever I need to do to get the job finished and get paid yeah. so I can pay bills and, <laughs> you know, and do all that Fair kind enough. of thing. When but you're I, using vector brushes, um, do you find that you have to switch the pressure off a little bit? Because I've noticed with vector brushes, the more um, it's very sensitive to pressure. And so they often block yes. you know, a lot more at the end of the tail of, you know, so do you, you do you, do you, um, do you switch that off or, or lower it? I lower it. <laughs> yeah, I definitely lower it. It's, it's, it can be a bit frustrating actually, because I do find sometimes I press too hard down on yeah. the, like with the, on the stylus and onto the screen and eventually I'll probably end up breaking the screen one day <laughs> from like how hard I, how hard I uh, press down. Yeah. yeah and have uh, you um have you changed the nibs yet on your your, your ipad pencil i haven't actually i use the same nib but i have i use a, a screen protector on my ipad so i use one that's textured so it's, it's meant to kind of it mimics paper but it's not like paper yeah. it just has a little bit more drag which then stops you from like sliding all over sliding all over the screen I've drawn murals on on windows though, like you know, on window shops, uh, shop shop windows, yeah. using like paint pens. So I'm kind of quite averse when it comes to like drawing on smooth surfaces. It's just the way you hold the pen. It's just the way you control uh, your wrist and your arm. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know the, the pens always come with an, another nib, don't they, for the top? But then I've never. I haven't changed mine yet. I'm wondering whether I should. Answer oh, actually, to the chat, yeah. please, everyone. How often do you change yours? Let us know. Yeah, <laughs> my nib's like proper nubbed down now. <laughs> it's like really. I quite like it though. It's uh, it's like I don't know if people use Posca markers in the group, but they're they're like paint pens. Oh and yes. Yeah, I use those for my murals, and I tend to find that now I I I took. Um, I can advise people on how to use them. Like once the nib is broken down, it absorbs so much more ink. So you can kind of get like fatter lines and, um, you know, and, and kind of use them for fills and such. Yeah. So like the more you degrade the pen, the better it is for me. So uh, it's, uh, yeah. yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you can add more color. See, Tony Harmer is an absolute expert when it comes to Posca pens and Converse or Vance trainers. He once oh, wow. did a Halloween kind of a shoe set and they were they were like a pair, a pair of shoes that I remember them having a, a like scary Halloween characters and coloured what they looked amazing I'm sure they're on um the design ninja's Instagram or Tony's Instagram wow <laughs> but yeah he's yeah he's actually put in the chat I do all my converse with Bosca so I'm gonna yeah. check I'm gonna check that out after this I think yeah for sure yeah Sandrine in the chat says Posca's all the way pump it up baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay. I agree. The, the colors are amazing, and like, when, once you kind of like put a Posca to a white wall, and then once it's dried, it just looks like um, it's just so clean and crisp. Yeah, so I always yeah, they're my pen of choice. Do you need to um, you know, when you draw a Posca pen on a trainer or something, do you need mm. to hair dry it to set it? I've seen people with hair dryers. Like, is yeah, this, you, you meant to do that? You're supposed to. Yeah, if you set it, I think. The, the good thing with Posca pens is that because it's like a water-based paint, it will soak into um, it will soak into a surface. I find that it sometimes soaks into, depending on the emulsion, it soaks into the wall. I've seen, I don't know if Tony like treats treats the trainers afterwards or if it's purely all on canvas, but I'm, I know there's like a sealant. There's like a, I think you can seal it with something, um, but I haven't done it myself. I haven't done it myself in years. Tony puts, um, you fix them with heat, yes. And then uh, right. Tony does use a fabric um, medium too. Medium? Okay, yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Oh, medium, yeah. Yeah. Fabric, fabric medium. medium. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> no, cool. Oh, that's good. Yeah, see, I just think that's that's so good. I was saying actually in the green room just before we got started today that my task for the week, as it's 
half term or summer term is tie dye. <laughs> I'm going to be tie dyeing everything in sight from Wednesday to Friday. So um, cost depends. This is I need to get on Amazon and and get a load in to to bring in another layer to this craft activity. <laughs> Look at by the way this drawing. You you've um we've only been drawing really since about twenty past twelve, and <laughs> your canvas it's just so. Like just finished already. You're, this is so good. Well, it's Love it. again. It's just I'm just drawing things that are very familiar to me. I don't know if any of you are like. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with um, like rap, like you know hip hop and such. And you've got like rap yeah. battles. I find yeah. a lot of the MCs they they have like patterns of words and phrases that they tend to use a lot. Yeah. And I I'm the same. I have characters that I use a lot. Oh, I have objects that I use a lot that I'll always draw. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of yours is it the um like the bear character in the center oh the bear character yeah, yeah the critters and the birds i use them a lot <laughs> like they nice. are big parts of like my my kind of i don't know if you call it a lexicon but my visual vocabulary mm -hmm. like we all have one i guess yeah uh, i'm gonna try and draw a big I'm, I'm interested in drawing like big fantasy characters but i kind of draw them in my own style yeah now that's cool hey you do have a question here um I'll come nice. to the side eye questions in a minute. Matt asks, what's the worst place you've had to do a mural? Matt once did one on a toilet door in a basement when he was stuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I nearly had to do one on a toilet door. Worst place, probably, oh, worst place, probably um, like nine feet up in the air. I, I hate, I've got to think for heights, like I can't can't handle heights and you know standing on the rickety ladder trying to do a, like just draw oh. a tiny little character floating above oh my god um yeah yeah, yeah that's that I don't like good. that I tend to turn, I turn those down all the time <laughs> like oh. if someone wants me to go high up I'm like no no, no. I'm not gonna do that no. yeah, yeah I like could. a fan of that I've seen yeah. actually um I don't know if any of you are following. They on uh, I think it's must be the side of a of a Gucci store in California. But they're painting like the giant murals that go all the way down. Like it's you need like to abseil down to paint it as you go. Like they're in cherry pickings and there. And it's beautiful. You honestly you should see what they're doing. It's beautiful. Really mm -hmm. big scale. And it would it would terrify me doing that. So it would, yeah, it would terrify me sure. too. One thing I've always wanted to try, or I wish more people did or tried, was use like drones to <laughs> like do like yeah like artwork, like the program. Mm, yeah as they go yeah That's i'd find cute. that really cool like i'd love to try that out imagine if you could hook up your ipad pro and just draw like you would in like fresco but it trace because you're using a vector it's tracing yeah. the vector and then the, the drone would just do all that kind of stuff. that so could be a any tech heads, idea yeah any tech heads in the chat i'll give you that idea <laughs> call your agent you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah set it up set it up <laughs> oh definitely no that would be, that'd be pretty I, cool and i think you're um you're well you know whilst your wife i think your wife i just dropped out a second there on your ipad oh, again okay. whilst you do no that worries. don't worry we've got lots of chat going on here today and um i know that uh, do you know what it turns out i'm not the only house that's going through the tie-dye phase at the moment so uh you know any artistic tips or anything you know that we can bring in then you know let me know um here we go sandrine says i had to do a hammer films themed mural um using collage i must say i don't draw well enough and um, in a goth bar and it disappeared under scribbles and doodles from customers within a week oh, oh really that's oh that's, that's kind great. of annoying yeah that's kind of annoying that is annoying but, uh, um, cool I've yeah on the subject of that I've in Sheffield I've been involved in a um, a charity drive to so like I've 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 customized a bear statue like a a six foot uh, fiberglass bear statue and there's like sixty of them so it's part of an art trail and oh, wow. uh, mine's the only one that's been uh, vandalized <laughs> or like or it was tipped over by drunk people so it's a horrible feeling that oh, it's, no. it's horrible. Yeah, it's oh, horrible. Oh, that's sad. You know, it's, it's for charity. You know, why, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, they had, um, I remember, they had a load of, was it grommets? Like, they're like Wallace's. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, a load of grommets that were going through Bristol at one point, mm. and we went on a little trail to kind of find them all. And they were all uh, loads of different artists that had done different designs across all of these. It's, oh, it's uh, so cool. It is good. But yeah, that's um, it's bad. Yeah, people see face. Oh, oh no, not good. No, not good. Anyway, yeah. change subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, um, you. I mean, you've nearly filled this whole campus already. This is just amazing. I'm drawing big. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm drawing big but I yeah I, li I like to I guess because I know I'm on like a, a, a time limit but I I would if I had like three hours or something I'd definitely draw like a whole world in here <laughs> mm, yeah, um, I that, yeah I mean I would like to get a setup one day and just like do like some live streams of me just drawing like for hours and then answering questions and such Oh, definitely. Well, you're in the right place now, you know, definitely. Yeah. And I'd say to you, like, what are your tips then for somebody that's going to get started mm. to draw something like this, um, you know, with different mm -hmm. characters? As you say, you've got your characters. Uh, what tips mm -hmm. would you give for them? To I say when it comes to drawing characters, you can turn anything into a character. So I have lots of scribbles where I'll just kind of draw, do something like this. And then, you know, it's, it's a rubbish circle that I'll just kind of, maybe a triangle nose, maybe these eyes, and then do that. And that's a character, right? So I have lots of pages of these kinds of drawings where this could be a character. And the eyes are a bit googly like that. Give them a hairstyle, give them shoulders. See? Oh, no. Oh, I think your wi is just cut out a little bit again. Do you know what? This is one of the things working from home. You know, it's mm. um, this is just you know the the way we live now, and it's completely normal as well. It's not it's not a shock or a um a, a mad panic like it used to be when the Wi Fi used to get. You know, <laughs> now it's like ah, the Wi Fi. Yeah, like, yeah. That's it, yeah. <laughs> so it's right. typical, really. It's typical, really, because I I was like testing it all week last week and searching. Oh. It's fine, but no, you know that's just how it is. It is, and hey, Jerron, uh, also Jerjon. Uh, says your characters would be wonderful to animate. We oh, saw yes. them in what you shared earlier, Joe. Um, you'd worked with uh, and was it animators that you'd worked with? I worked, yes, I worked with an animator based in LA to, to create those ones for Taco Bell. But I worked locally, and I've actually made a music video for um, the band the Quakers, uh -huh. and that yeah. was cool because I worked with an animator again. I just created the puppets in um, in Photoshop. Uh, you can see that on my Instagram if you scroll down. It's it's a music video for Quakers, and that was really fun. But I didn't really get to draw my own characters. They were just, I mean, I drew I drew like a superhero character, but they're not like the characters here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I would love to see these animated. I've never animated these ones myself. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the a lot of the gifts that I animate are like icon, like icons like hearts and mm -hmm. and things like that. And then how did you work with the animator? Like, did you agree, I'm going to draw this character this way, and then, the, I mean, you know, we're going to make the movement, you know, with the arm go to the right, so you're going to draw a sequence of kind of movements or? Yeah, so, well, so like the, the one for the music video, <laughs> I'm not going to, I love working with him. He's great because he just kind of trusts me with everything. When I first started working with him, he didn't want to, he didn't give me like a, a storyboard per se, he just gave me like an animatic. Mm -hmm. like he made from like stock images yeah. and he just let me interpret it mm -hmm. let me come up with the character designs um i mean the sad reality with music videos there's not a lot of budget in them but then that means you're you're given a lot of creative freedom to do your thing and the mm -hmm. client then can't really say much if they if they say oh we want a giant spider in there it's like well that's not going to work because you're not <laughs> paying as much to do this yeah. so give us give us the freedom but luckily the client was just, they were very cool. They were really understanding. And they just said, just do your thing and have fun. Mm. And that's what we did. But yeah, I, I would tend yeah. to, I, I would like, to, it would have been, it would have been good to work with um, like a storyboard. But then I think without using a storyboard, the project then kind of was, it kind of came about because we both then could just adapt our ideas on the fly. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing that I try and latch onto with how I work. I'm, I try to be as adaptable as possible. Um, you know, we've just gone through, like I said, we've just gone through like, uh, it's, 
like like lockdown and such and we had to adapt like how we worked and what kind of content we made started making content last year something i wouldn't have thought about doing mm. but you just have to adapt you know yeah. get a new get a new ipad get a new software learn how to use it adapt yeah have you ever found that you felt that you've had to adapt something too much which could have been maybe out of scope for a project that you've worked on where you know, you've got an artistic director that's completely changed their mind along the way. Has that ever happened to you? That's happened to me a few times, yeah. It's happened to me a few times on some jobs. And mm. it's as jarring as it is, it's, you know, you, you are kind of at the mercy, though, of, like, people that you'll never meet in, in, in meetings. There's always, like, another voice that's kind of like, oh, this needs to look like this, this needs to change. You could be working on something for, like, two weeks, with a team and they're approving it and then all of a sudden one person that hasn't been in any of the calls or any of the emails that comes back off holiday and just totally changes <laughs> changes the whole direction of the project yeah. I have experienced that and the younger me would be really um, frustrated but I think the longer you work on commercial projects you kind of understand like these things can happen it's nothing personal it's yeah. silly because <laughs> like sometimes <laughs> there's politics involved but yeah just try not to sweat the small stuff I guess yeah Kath in the chat says "Ooh, sounds so familiar (laughs) yeah exactly very familiar I think that's the kind of anxiety you have as like a a freelance creative like at any point in time some things may happen that are totally out of your control and you just Mm -hmm. can't do anything about it so you just have to learn to the more you experience those experience that the better it is because then nothing surprises you the later, you know, the, yeah. the longer you do this, nothing should surprise you. I find it really easier, you know, much easier at the start to agree with the amount of people that are reviewing or making mm-hmm. comments and changes. Because as you say, it's always that, oh, let's just run this by this additional person. And then that's suddenly mm-hmm. things can definitely, you know, and Tim adds to the chat, we know it when we see it. <laughs> <laughs> when, oh, oh, yes, God. the worst. <laughs> yeah that's the worst (laughs) because I share a studio space with other illustrators and designers like you know we tell each other of like our horror stories and sometimes I'd be I just you know put my headphones on trying to do my work and I can hear you know (laughs) one of my friends is like calls like zoom calls and I'm just like this sounds horrible it sounds like you're going through you know you are biting your tongue (laughs) like very well yes yeah, Kirsty says it only takes for someone to go and suggest an idea that becomes the light bulb moment. Oh God, yeah, it's it's just I get it. Like sometimes people just want they want their input and they want to kind of have their stamp on the job. Mm. Um, but then you know, as the lowly artist who's only just getting commissioned to do this, like sometimes you come last in a weird way. That's why I yeah. found. Yeah. Hey, Ger- John in the chat asks, um, how much of these characters that you're drawing now are pre-planned, you know, or are you making them up as you go along? And I think you said earlier that these are your your go-to kind of characters, right? That you've seen mm, a lot. Of yeah, work. these yeah these are kind of pre-planned or pre-like drawn characters. I'm, tr- but I'm I'm trying to give them variables. I'm trying to make them into different variants. Like this, I like this little Godzilla character that I draw. Mm. Uh, I come back to mirroring. Yeah, a lot of them have been drawn like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times <laughs> before. So uh, they are all... They, practice, practice makes perfect, as you said. Practice Sorry, makes perfect. Man. Yeah, that's it. Um, that's so, so yeah, like if, if I had them all, I could, I could show you all my sketchbooks, all my sketchbooks of like random characters that I've amassed over years. Uh, I'll see if I can come up with a random character now. Oh, okay. I have a character that I like to draw. I do a variation of this character. I call him the speaker peep. I've drawn this character since I was at, like, college. And he's just an anthropomorphic speaker. Ah. I saw this on one of your other drawings. Yeah, he's one of my favorite characters. I've wanted to animate this character and tell him, you know, give him like a comic book, like superhero origin and such. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's time. Sometimes, like, I, just don't ha- I don't have the time to do these things. I'd love yeah. to, though. Yeah, yeah. Those that be like those personal projects, which are just exciting to work on. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I have to keep my it. personal projects really short because if I try and work on something too long, it just the passion dies in some way and, and it makes me like dislike it. Yeah. Which is really weird. Yeah, I get you. I, I completely get you. We were talking in the green room just before we went live that I think I've met my layer limit on Fresco. <laughs> and, uh, and I was drawing all of Friday. I had Elvis next to me, um, watching Grey's Anatomy. And I had uh, my Fresco and I was drawing tree houses. And uh, yeah, I've met a, a layer limit. I can't, can't get past it. So it kind of frustrated me a little. I had to put it down. So I need to come back to that. You know, maybe what do you find? Uh, what do you tend to watch when you're drawing? You know, when you're just like, you know, iPad in lap. It used um, to be Friends, and now it's Grey's Anatomy. Mm-hmm. Um, I find sitcoms are really good to watch. Yeah, what you're not you really. You don't have to watch. Yeah, you don't have really have to watch them, do you? You can just like have them on in the background. Um, I've just finished Kim's Convenience on Netflix, and I oh. just finished People Just Do Nothing, which is like a. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, that's funny. It's a mockumentary. <laughs> it's a mockumentary about uh, a gang, like a, a gang in Brentford that run a pirate radio station. Okay. Very, that's very good it. British comedy. I love a British comedy. You've got to love <laughs> yeah. comedy. Speaking of comedy, you've got Tim in the chat. <laughs> and Tony. Tim said, all the single layers, all the single layers. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, this is a single layer. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Thank it you for that. It is a single layer. And Tony's reminded me, not to mention our colour limits, eh, Maddie Moss? Um, <laughs> so on the stream, we, we did have a competition a while ago where I was not allowed, I think I'd lost points and I, I wasn't allowed to draw in any grayscale whatsoever. So I, I couldn't see really what I was drawing. And I think I burnt the colour into several people's <laughs> screens. So, you know, still, still with us. Oh, really? <laughs> that was, that was funny. oh, it was hilarious. I think I cried. Like, only cats could understand me. I was crying, laughing. It was very funny. <laughs> I think we'll do another one later this year, but you should, oh, you should come back and, and join us. It's, uh, it's so yeah, much definitely. fun to go. Oh, oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. This is, this is a lot of fun, actually, just, just chatting and drawing. Yeah. Well, we said it Great. would go fast earlier, and it's um, 12 gotcha. 47. It feels like 10 minutes. You've almost completed a whole cat. I can't believe how much you've done. Like it's so much on oh, that. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and it feels like 10 minutes. And um, I should also let you all know that um, on Wednesday, Tony Harmer will be back uh, with Matt Voice. So Tony will be uh, running our, our Wednesday session this week. And Friday, I think it will be a, a surprise. Um, something fun. I'm sure something fun will be lined up for you on Friday. But yeah, so, and the week goes so fast as well. And uh, we've yeah, been chatting for 47 minutes and it feels like <laughs> 10, honestly. Yeah. So, yeah, Angus says, yeah. Geo, the return would be very welcome. Yes, we definitely need Geo back. For oh, sure. definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, oh, definitely. But you're right, though. It's really good to have something on in the background that you can work and I have to find like I listen to streams I listen to a lot of the video streams actually that Jason Levine used to do um mm. and I have that on in the background so I've got my iPad here and I'll be sat working if I'm not on calls mm. or things you know I always have something going on but um but yeah there's lots of good series and things on Netflix especially British comedies and things mm-hmm. Can... Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also do a lot of audiobooks as well I find audiobooks are really mm. good for kind of I find like I, I take in more information when I listen to an audiobook and I'm drawing and I don't have to like you know move around and focus on something else yeah it's, it's quite good I don't know if anyone's ever tried this but if you if you do like say coloring books color color a page in a coloring book and watch a very uh science heavy or like difficult documentary and you'll be so surprised like how much that you retain Really? You retain if you just look at the coloring sheet that you you've done, and you'll notice like little timestamps of things like oh yeah they were talking about this particle and they were talking about this bird here it's it's quite interesting. Yeah, it's, I bet the yeah, colors as well would kind of translate probably and influence how you're coloring in. That's true. Yeah, let me see if I can quickly add a little bit of color. So I've noticed you're speed. mixing up your. Your brushes here as well. So you've drawn it in vector, then I've seen you've added some of the comic brushes from the Yeah, these comic brushes are good actually. So I've got a separate yeah. layer for heart like 
cross hatching and half tones and yeah it's great i love it, isn't it? <laughs> so i love the dotted brush i can't remember the name of it now half tone or yeah i think that's a half tone brush yeah yeah, um, yeah they are good. i have like such a bonehead way of coloring i know people will probably tell me like i should use masks and stuff but i just kind of as a process i just kind of create marquee masks and then like fill them in yeah as i said before you know everybody has their own way and i think what's good about adobe live is that you can pick up all these different ways to do it because other people might feel that their way is, is even longer and you, you'll feel that your way is longer but actually yours is faster mm -hmm. than something else right so, yeah uh, yeah that's it yeah that's it yeah. <laughs> Angus has put Maddie's <laughs> sorry T R I'm laughing. Angus has put Maddie's colours has stayed with me. Um Sandrine's <laughs> inquiring about my mug today. Yes, Japan today. I, I do love a, a good um vector art coffee mug, as long as everything's in proportion and it's not uh it's not... <laughs> <laughs> oh and Tony says <laughs> he says I can no longer perceive the colour red thanks to Mad. <laughs> 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 amazing see this is what happens this is the mischief we get up to on these adobe live streams are you getting bullied on the stream <laughs> is that what happens are they bullying you <laughs> oh it's so much fun honestly this group oh i love it i absolutely love it so funny what is everyone um, else doing when they're watching the stream is, is everyone else working are they this is my question to the to the chat well, I did see working? that, uh, I think it was Linda was enjoying a cheeseburger whilst she's oh, no. been uh, listening to us today. Oh, and, I was having her uh, lunch. <laughs> oh, Stuart's working and lurking. Working and lurking. Kirsty's watching what yeah. you're doing. Oh. So, that's yeah. yeah oh, that's it's great. all good. How do you decide your colours, by the way? Because this, this is a good tip. I was awful when it came to colours when I was younger. I used to draw everything in black and white. And uh, I think I just I just kept to like CMYK a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the colours, I like contrasting colours, things that are bright. Like I kind of riff off a lot of uh, like Japanese style, like graphics and, and illustrations. Mm. So I just make it like bright and colourful. But of course, I, f I feel that like, I can work to very, what's the word? Very, um, very, what's the word? Flexible color range. So, you know, if it's yeah. client dependent, brand dependent. But yeah, a lot of the time, I just I'm just drawn to to bright colors now. Yeah. But I, but I try keep them like three to a minute, three to a maximum uh, on certain jobs. Mm. But I had that, and, and some of the slides earlier, I think you've seen that I, I played with like full color ranges in some of the works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of it's experimenting. And, and of course, like doing colors on separate layers, then I just, I can just interchange them to different colors, which right. isn't a problem. So yeah. I do like the fact that earlier on that you mentioned, Joe, that you, you like your work to have that kind of a happy tone to it that can brighten somebody's day and I think that that you really comes through in the oh. in, in your drawing oh thank it's you playful and fun and uh it's come together so well in like honestly you, you started drawing at 20 past 12 it's like half an hour <laughs> it's like 30 minutes of like brilliance and uh, I'm, I'm practicing for a competition actually I'm doing I'm competing in a uh, competition in London uh, this weekend amazing like a, a, a digital drawing round as well so it's going to be interesting <laughs> okay that sounds good yeah okay. Should be okay. are you quite competitive no not at all i'm not competitive at all but i thought it was worth giving a go oh, um, definitely oh yeah it's breaking the line oh no oh, no no it's fine okay nope, not there. i do this and then you're there. searching forever to find out where the break is yeah, it's much great. easier to color them like this with vector brushes than it is, mm. um, you know, otherwise you've got to color around the edges a lot, you know, with your yeah. own vectors great for this, but obviously you've got to find that little break, don't you? That's it, yeah. I'm probably frustrating everyone here now. It's just like, oh, no. No, we're way. all searching. This is like, where's Wally? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's it. It's like, where's Wally? <laughs> yeah. Where's Wally? Oops. Uh... It's crazy how fast you can kind of like just 
like kind of create a workflow working like mm. this it's great it's so good it really is so i oh, yeah, very impressed and so um you've got the competition coming up any other yes. big things that you're working on now that are gonna you know at the moment um a couple of commercial projects i can't really talk about <laughs> but so the so the so recently the most exciting thing is getting on this the uh, the live stream and um this competition that i'm doing which is called the world it's the illustrated world series uh cool. so yeah so i'm looking forward to that i think i think um it, because it's such a new experience for me to kind of like you know compete so to speak but it's all friendly you know i'm not, I'm not going to try and be the, the villain or anything like that yeah oh no i love a competition any any comp you know oh I love it. We can't have a, a summer barbecue without a game of rounders. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a British thing, right? Of us all, like, we, we love a barbecue over here, don't we? And then, you know. I love rounders as well. Oh, yeah, I love rounders. It's so good. <laughs> this is coming together, like, so well, though. Like, I, honestly, you can, you've really got a good style. And I could see there's so many places, you know. Oh, thank you. So many yeah, thank things. you. It really is good. Uh, you know what? I might add in a new color as well. Uh, oh, you know what? Just to make it speedier, I'm just going to just merge this into one. <laughs> I'm just trying to complete the. I just want to complete the um, the picture before. Oh, don't feel the. I mean, as I said, we're always on Discord afterwards, so right, you know, okay. don't feel the need to like finish it within the hour at all. And um, Sandrine says, and I completely agree. I really love how easy Geo makes this look. Oh, really? <laughs> you do. You really do, though. Like, I would probably oh, start with okay. one character, and then I'd be like, oh. What do I do next? Um, <laughs> you know, and then um, Stuart asks, do you do stickers? Oh, I do. Yeah, I do make stickers, actually. Um, I tend to, I'm really bad at distributing them because I tend to make them and I give them to friends and clients and such. But yeah. like, I always say, actually, I always say, um, you can always get me on Instagram, like DM me and I'll send some stickers out. Amazing. Yeah, I yeah, can I really see your work in stickers. <laughs> yeah I, I make a lot of stickers um i like just kind of like throwing them around in like coffee shops and things that's cool i'm a big fan of stickers big fan. Well, i'll be sure to send you guys some oh definitely yeah it's one of the good things about adobe max going around and collecting all the stickers and so it's, mm -hmm. i can't show you because it's on the back of my laptop screen but it's full of, of stickers so uh, yeah yeah I, I do the same thing on my laptop as well yeah, yeah. Just, See, it's addictive, yeah. It? it is yeah I keep a lot of them and I keep special stickers mm. but I think it's good to have like it's good to flex your sticker game when you take your laptop it, into a coffee shop it is and uh, now the whole chat has turned it we get Stuart is a sticker addict according to Sandrine Angus's uh speaker head stickers would be great um Sandrine says, can we do a sticker exchange board? Kirsty loves stickers. Oh, yeah. I tell you who does good stickers, Tony Harmer. He does oh, some okay. good um, design ninja and it's got like ink kind of, uh, was it the head of an ink pen? What do you call that? It's not a nib, it's bigger than a nib. I don't even know what, the, what that is called, but it's all around the, around the edge. They're good stickers. I've got one of those on there. Dip pen nibs. Thank you, Tony. Dip, Dip pen, pen nibs. That's what it is. Oh. Yeah. See? Oh, right, right. Yeah, That's see, we all, cool. all love the stickers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've had Mike says, I never know where to stick a sticker. Laptops. Laptops. Always laptops. Yeah, so Kirsty agrees with me that Tony's are the best stickers ever. And Stuart says, Tony Merch is strong. <laughs> 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 the Merch is strong with this one. Um, you know, Matt says, here, where did your sticker obsession start, Gio? Oh, I think like I used to collect football stickers when I was young, but then you used to get uh, when my uncles would come back from Hong Kong, they'd give us loads of like anime stickers, like Dragon mm -hmm. Ball Z and uh, characters like uh, Doramon and 
all these like kind of really famous like cartoony Japanese characters so yeah. I think that's when I was kind of like obsessed with stickers then oh. and uh, we met John Bergerman who started off like kind of creating stickers uh he came to our university to kind of show us the stuff that he was working on and he's the guy who got me into creating murals oh, for starters. Wow. And he was like heavily involved in like a stick yeah oh, he was involved in a sticker yeah. scene so um that's so cool so, yeah. well um geo i can't believe that it's one o'clock already we've been yeah. on the stream for an hour you've completed a whole canvas like a whole illustration which is just amazing showing off all of your work and all of the characters that you know you see um we put the instagram link you know in the chat um if anyone scrolls up the chat you can see geo law on instagram and on behance as well of course um and geo it's so good to have you you definitely got to come back and do some more drawing for us it's, it's been really lovely i'd love it yeah definitely this is great oh it's so good and any last parting advice for anybody any quick kind of a quick tip that you can give people to get started yeah, when you're when you're starting your own when you're starting on this journey, it's your journey. So try and yeah. look at you can look at other people, look at how they work and everything, but you're not them. They're not you. You are you. So just keep working at your own thing. But it's great to take in influences and references and such. But just remember, it's always all about you, how you approach it. Perfect. I love it. Thank you so much, Gio. Uh, we'll welcome you back soon, I'm sure. And thank you to everyone that joined us today. See you all soon. Bye, everybody.